G'day, it's Clint Patterson here with some more help for your rheumatoid arthritis reversal plan. And today I have a warning for you. It's a big warning and I have seen this before and I wanted to share an example of this with you uh, so that you might be able to avoid this situation. Um, this information is coming through from an email that I have received um, it says, Chow Clint, I was pain free and pill free for one year after your program. Now, I did a colon cleanse two months ago and the rheumatoid arthritis flared up badly. Now I need to take methotrexate again plus cortisone and non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs. Have you heard of this earlier? Love, Ecanta. The name's Ecanta. Now, huge warning. So first of all, um, let's just think about this situation. So the microbiome is very, very delicate. It's an ecosystem of living organisms that are competing with each other for mostly space and territory. Um, you've got two layers of mucus, one sitting on top of another inside the colon. The colon's where all the mucus, sorry, all the mucus, yes, and all of the bacteria that are influencing our immune system are residing okay so if we then go and do a colon cleanse and i presume that ecanta is talking about one of these colonic irrigations where you go to a clinic and you lie on your back and they stick a tube where you wouldn't normally look and um, then they run continuous warm water through the colon for up to 45 minutes i know all this because i've done all this stuff there's not many things that you can possibly do to try and eliminate rheumatoid arthritis that I haven't done. And I've been to these clinics before in the past and I've laid there and I've run these procedures, had this procedure done. Now, it is too aggressive if you have a delicate immune system like rheumatoid arthritis, sciatic arthritis, ankylosing, spondylitis, whatever, right? If you're running a delicate recovery plan and then you go and run continuous friction water flow through the colon for a very long period of time in the most unnatural manner. You think about what actually is going on with this colonic irrigation, right? It's like a river, a continuous river running past the, those uh, bacterial colonies. And so this is quite different than my actual recommendation of an occasional enema. An enema is just where you apply gravity to feed approximately 500 milliliters of water into the beginning lower part of the colon at best and mostly just into the rectum. And then the water can then be just expelled like going to the toilet as you normally would. Now that is an entirely different situation than the friction effect the, um, of the, the first case, which is a colonic irrigation. So, we have to be careful to remember how delicate our health restoration is. We cannot go messing with things once we feel good. It's this whole getting into the healing groove is tricky. And once we're in the healing groove, we do not want to mess with it because this sort of stuff can happen. Now, it does seem overkill to me that Ecanta is talking about going on methotrexate, cortisone, and non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs. So she has probably written this email after visiting the rheumatologist who takes enormous overkill kind of action like this. In, in a lot of cases, rheumatologists do. They just throw everything at it. Their objective is no symptoms, not no disaster as a result of the drugs, but just no symptoms. That's kind of the only thought a lot when someone presents with a lot of problems. It's let's get it under control as quick as we can and then back away on some of the meds. Well, you know, um, uh, Ecanta may have felt better and then reintroduced a lot of additional foods that are too advanced and then had the colonic in irrigation and then it's been in delicate balance and triggered this. But other things can cause this to happen. So it's not just the colonic irrigation, but it's a complacency that we must avoid. I've seen this sort of hap things happen with uh, natural herbs from natural paths, recommend antimicrobial uh, um, herbal supplements. 
Um, I could imagine this sort of thing could happen with very stressful events. Um, one study showed that just by doing long distance travel and international travel, 12 hour flight can disrupt your microbiome. It's not gonna do something like this, but these things need to be, we need to be mindful of what we're doing so as to treat our delicate newborn infant baby, if we could think of it like that, of a microbiome that isn't robust, that isn't impervious to, to um, disruption. Okay, so um, you can't, it's done all this work and then it's gone and done a stupid colonic irrigation and has uh, probably flushed out so much of her healthy microbiome uh, residence and, um, and now she uh, is faced with having to probably go back to the start of our program and work her way through the, uh, the um, gut recolonization process. So don't let this happen to you. Be so, so careful. The path through the mountain is extremely narrow. And then once you have achieved your destination, there is no room for complacency. Once you feel good, keep doing what you're doing. Don't go messing with stuff. Don't listen to people who suggest fancy treatments that are not natural, okay? Because you don't go out into nature, lie down on the ground and have a river go through your butt for nearly an hour. Okay, that's it for me. I hope you've gained a little bit of confidence uh, and, and reassurance that uh, uh, you've got to stick to what you're doing because um, messing with it can result in uh, unfortunate circumstances that are going to require a lot of work again. All right, talk to you later.